Imagine waking up tomorrow to discover the entire internet has been turned off. Not my Wi-Fi is down off. Not a submarine cable got cut off. I mean really off, like a giant cosmic hand flipped the switch labeled internet to off. First, let's deal with the immediate reaction. Most people wouldn't even notice for a few seconds. You just pick up your phone, open an app, watch the little loading spinner do its hypnotic dance, and assume your carrier is being annoying. Then you try again, and again, and again. Then you might restart your phone. Some would throw it against the wall. Meanwhile, news would spread in the least efficient way possible. Shouting, handwritten notes, and that one guy on a bike who insists on personally telling everyone. TV stations, if they could, would switch to breathless coverage with dramatic music. Anchors would struggle to fill airtime without any online sources to crib from, rediscovering things like books and talking to experts in person. Governments would call emergency meetings. No video calls. Those are gone. You'd see convoys of cars rushing toward capital cities because no one can even email an agenda. The irony here is delicious. Officials forced to discuss how to fix the internet without the internet they'd have to use fax machines, assuming they even remember how they work. Now let's talk about work. Most offices would shut down within hours. The cloud, gone. Emails, gone. All those online project management tools with cheerful names like Synergize Pro or Gantley, gone. The boss can't even micromanage you anymore. A collective cheer would go up from workers worldwide, briefly uniting humanity in joy before the panic set in. Financial markets would freeze almost instantly. Trading algorithms can't trade. Payment processors can't process. Online banking, a relic of the past. You want cash? Get ready for lines at the ATM, assuming they're even working. Many depend on online backends. Bank tellers would need to learn actual math again. And social media, completely dead. At first, there'd be mass confusion. No Instagram, no Twitter wars, no Facebook arguments with that one uncle people might actually have to talk face to face. Imagine trying to explain your hot take about the latest celebrity scandal using only your voice and facial expressions. Horrifying. E-commerce would vanish. No ordering shoes at 2 a.m. because you're sad. No groceries magically appearing at your door. Instead, local stores would see a renaissance. The phrase, shop local, would stop being aspirational and become a grim necessity. You'd rediscover the strange experience of handing someone paper money and receiving coins in return. Streaming? Forget it. No Netflix, no Spotify. You'd have to rely on physical media, like DVDs, CDs, or brace yourself, books. Teenagers would be forced to learn what a library is. Wait, you mean I have to go somewhere and borrow something and give it back? Even the infrastructure of modern life would groan under the loss. Power grids rely on online monitoring. Logistics networks use internet-based tracking. Air traffic control systems depend on real-time updates. While many have offline backups, losing the internet would mean more delays, more uncertainty, and a lot of people trying to remember how to use paper charts. Supply chains would become a nightmare. Factories would struggle to get parts. Warehouses wouldn't know what's in stock. Retailers would have to do inventory by hand. That guy who's worked at the local store for 40 years and knows where everything is would suddenly be a rock star. Academia would suffer too. No more online journals or research databases. Professors would have to order physical copies. Undergrads would no longer be able to copy-paste Wikipedia entries into their essays, a tragedy of truly biblical proportions. Healthcare would be hit hard. Electronic records? Offline. Scheduling systems? Down. Pharmacies would revert to phone calls and handwritten prescriptions. Doctors might even have to remember things without checking WebMD. Meanwhile, black markets for offline data would emerge. People selling printed Wikipedia sets. Thumb drives passed around like contraband. Psst, you want the latest research on climate change? I got the PDFs. After a few days, society would split. The older generation might adjust better. They remember a time before the internet. Millennials and Gen Z would rock in corners, muttering TikTok catchphrases to themselves. Kids would ask their parents, but how did you know anything without Google? And their parents would stare blankly into the distance. Tech companies would be in chaos. Google employees would gather in cafeterias for hushed meetings. Anyone remember the original 1998 code? 
Maybe we can mail it to people? Amazon warehouses would be full of undeliverable packages. Elon Musk would hold a press conference explaining that while SpaceX can't help, he's confident they can launch a giant satellite labeled Internet 2 if someone gives him enough money. International cooperation would be frantic. Scientists would brainstorm ways to rebuild a network from scratch. Mesh networks, satellite relays, ham radio collectives would suddenly become the world's communication elite, lording their weird expertise over the rest of us. Eventually, new networks would emerge, piecemeal. Local networks first, then regional. Engineers would work around the clock to create new backbone connections. It wouldn't be the old internet, it would be a patchwork, cobbled together in desperation. And of course, new protocols would be developed. Internet 2.0, people would say, hopefully, ignoring the fact that it's built on the ruins of human sanity and millions of broken email chains. The biggest change wouldn't be technological, though. It would be social. For a while, people would remember how to be present. Neighbors would talk. Families would play board games. The world might even seem quieter. But don't worry. As soon as the new network was up, we'd immediately rebuild all the worst parts. Spam, conspiracy theories, ads for dubious supplements. People would instantly go back to yelling at strangers online. Because if there's one thing we've proven, it's that humanity can't resist turning even the greatest technological achievement into an elaborate, never-ending shouting match. So what would happen if the internet turned off worldwide? Chaos? improvisation, reinvention, and eventually, the same old nonsense, but with slightly better memes.